Alright, today we're going to be tearing into a Kawasaki 100 motorcycle. This is a two-stroke motorcycle. We're going to pull your head off, we're going to pull your intake, uh, your carburetor, your uh, throttle, uh, clutches, stator, uh, the whole work. So we're going to start with the top end here. We've got four cylinder head bolts. They're a 12 millimeter nut on here. It's obviously an air-cooled motor. And I don't know what's going on with this motor as to why we're tearing into it. So we'll see what we find when we get into it. So we've got the head here and that dome is really clean. You want to check that really good. Make sure there's not major dings or nicks in it. And then this is, we've got your head gasket here and this is a copper colored gasket here. And then underneath your cylinder, and we'll pull that cylinder off next, will be your base gasket. And you want to be really careful doing this so you don't damage any fence. Sometimes it just takes a couple taps though to get that off. Other times you've got to get something a little bit stronger. You want to be really careful where you put pressure on here because these fins will break very easily. So a lot of times if it doesn't come up uh, with the first time or two, I'll soak it with some um, some kind of lubricant just to just to kind of get it broke free. And once you get it broke free, a lot of times it'll come up pretty easily. But also to this gasket, as tight as this is, gets caught on these threads. And so sometimes that can be keeping you up too once you, once you start getting it pulled out of there. So once you get it kind of broke free, that gasket, once you break that seal, just lift up and kind of walk it off of there. And we've got that cylinder. That's a, that's a cast cylinder. So that is got a, quite a bit of weight to it. So inspect that really good. Check the cylinder walls. It's only 100, so we've got a really small piston on this thing. And to remove, remove that piston, what I do is grab a, a pick or even a small screwdriver, get it in, get it in beside that, um, in that groove there, and then kind of pry it out. There's a circlip in there holding that pin. I keep my finger over top to keep it from flying all over the place. So then once you're able to get that clip out of there, push that pin out that direction. If you've got to use a lot of force, if this piston seized up or something, what you want to do is support this piston before you do any serious tapping on it to get this pin out because you, you could damage a crankshaft if you pry on it um, very hard without any support. So we've got your roller bearing here and just to keep everything together uh, we'll slide this roller bearing down um, in between that pin there until we go back together with everything. So take that stir clip then and I take hold it just like that, stick it in as far as you can get it down there and then I take my pick then and we'll kind of push it in the rest of the way. And there's your piston there. So next we're gonna flip it up. I think uh, we're gonna go ahead and pull this cover here. We, well, now let's do this other side to get these cables out of the way from sliding all over the place. So we're gonna tip this motor up here and see if we can get it to stay. Underneath of this, and this is, they don't do this anymore, is your carburetor. And uh, we've got Phillips screws all the way around this. So we take a Phillips screwdriver here. We've got our cables coming in here and our choke here. Now they do that so that, um, and they put this rubber cap on here so that it'll keep any debris or water from going in there. The other thing that you want to look at here, here is a rubber cap, and you won't be able to see it very good until I pop it off there, but this rubber cap um, is how you can pull that carburetor off so you're not having to pull all these covers off. So we've got this um, cover here that seals up that um, carburetor here. We've got the assembly here. Now that um, that rubber cap that I took out there goes right in here and there's a Phillips screw that clamps this carburetor to the actual crankcase. So by taking that um, that rubber cap off here you're able to get to that clamp otherwise you've got to pull this cover. Well you can't pull this cover because the carburetor is attached to it. So that's why they put that rubber cap on there. Take a flat screwdriver then, undo that clamp, that carburetor. Once you get the boot unhooked from this case, because that'll keep you from sliding it up, then you can pull this out. Now these oil lines, um, this oil line is no good, or this fuel line 
is no good. It's extremely brittle. So we're just going to take and kind of lift that off of there. And we can, might have to actually, well, we should be able to get it out there. And then that's just trash due to how stiff that is. So we've got, um, uh, your, your oil line or your oil cable coming through here. We've got throttle and cable and it starts with a throttle. This is twist throttle here goes up to the twist throttle on the handlebars controls your throttle up and down there and also goes to your oil line. So we'll go ahead and pull this cover here and underneath this is where your oil pump sits. Three Phillips screws will remove this color cover. Your oil level on this motorcycle, checking the oil level, you'll fill it right here. You've got a fill plug here. You'll notice there's no dipstick on here, no way to tell how full your oil is. So what you do, 10 millimeter or a Phillips screw, remove this. Now when oil, with your bike setting flat, perfectly straight up and down, um, fill your oil up. When oil starts coming out of there, you, you put this plug back in and stop filling that oil. Um, so this is called the oil level right here. So oil starts coming out, that's how you know it's exactly where it needs to be. All right, we've got an oil pump here. Here's your oil line running back here. So we'll remove that. We've got two Phillips screws that'll remove this oil pump. So we're gonna go ahead and take this line, and I might just undo that line now to get that out of the way. That takes a eight millimeter to remove this line. You can pull the hose off there. Sometimes when they're this old, they're extremely brittle and difficult to come off there. So we've got a banjo bolt we can just take out here. And it, they call it a banjo because there's oil flows out the end of this oil, uh, this bolt here and goes through these orifices there. So just make sure you've got a crush washer on either side of that. Um, oil pump. Cable now, 10 millimeter wrench to loosen it here. And then we're able just to turn this, if you can see that, my hand's not in the way there. We're able just to turn that, that'll give us some slack there. Lift the cable out and around that piece there, and then we can just unscrew it here. If you're cleaning that carburetor, you obviously want to pull that carburetor out. Some people think just Spraying a carb carburetor off with some carbon choke cleaner or some compressed air is all you need to do. But you want to clean, you want to take that carburetor out, and then on a separate video, check my YouTube videos. You'll see us cleaning this carburetor, going through it, and inspecting it, and then I'll explain it as we go. So keep your eye out for that. This carburetor is in really good shape. Just about got this. This got really tight here, so. We're running up against this um, rubber damper here. And we might be able to just pull that rubber damper out. That I don't want to break that cable. We we're so close to. comes out then and then like I said watch we'll show you a video on how to clean this carburetor remove these cables here on a separate a separate video so we've got the carburetor off there now we've got our uh, clutch cable coming in here I'm gonna flip this up so I can show you a couple things on the bottom here this cover here two Phillips screws and one of them I see is extremely stripped out um, that is where that fuel will drain um, if the fuel starts leaking out of that carburetor, it'll come out this bottom piece here. It also acts as a, a clutch cable holder. So, oh man, they really did a number on that screw. I'm going to see if I can get it out of there with a pair of vice grips, otherwise we might have to... 
check a couple different options here. So this, there's uh, two screws holding this bottom on. Well, what I'm gonna do, just to keep things moving, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on that here in a little bit, but I'm just gonna slightly bend that enough to get this cable out from behind there. And then to remove this cable now, you can you can bend this cable will come with let's see. Okay, there's a tab in behind this cable. You can bend that back. And then you're able to take that cable then. Sometimes these cables will come with this end on there. This, that might be the case with this one. I'm going to go ahead and remove the cable from this end to give us a little bit of slack. A lot easier to do this when it's on the bike. So I'm turning the screw all the way in. That way it gives us some slack. That may not be enough slack, but we'll see how far we can get. The other thing we can do is pull it off here, which I don't like doing it there, but uh, for the sake of time, maybe we'll, maybe we'll go ahead and do that. So that's just a 10 millimeter. Well, we're not even gonna be able to pull it off there. My goodness. Okay, I'm gonna just remove this cable, this lever here, slide it out. If it's on the bike, you can pull this cable back. Just, just makes it a whole lot easier. So then we'll get these grooves lined up here. Pull the cable out, now we'll have all kinds of slack. Cable's out now, we're gonna put these screws back in there quick so we don't lose these. Most of the time if your motor's out, you're gonna, you're, you're already done with this part, but. All right, clutch cable's done there. Now we've got all kinds of slack, I would hope. Okay, we're still hitting on our holder down here. All right, now we just slid that cable out of there, so now we should be able to, oh, and there's a clip here, nope, all right, we are able to get that cable out of there, so that's out of our way, it took longer than I had hoped, that's out. We'll remove that oil pump now. And that you just have to slide out, just kind of wiggle it back and forth to get that off of there. So we've got a bunch of Phillips screws. And well, let's pull this. This intake is just a Phillips screw right here. And that's your air filter. Now to get to your air filter, there's two clips. And then your filters, filters like that. That's your air box there. And I'll flip this over now. Get into the magneto here.
Uh, let's see, you don't have to pull this cover here. It looks like they started doing that, but um, one, two, three screws to pull this cover off and the cover's off there. So it looks like this is damaged here. A lot of times that happens. This chain binds, uh, breaks and binds in there and it a lot of times break that cover. A lot of times it'll break this case, but fortunately on this, it did not. We've got a sensor here. Two Phillips screws to remove there. All right, now we'll go ahead and remove this flywheel. Okay, to remove the flywheel here, we're gonna go ahead and pull this 14 millimeter. And you gotta have a flywheel puller. I like to, before I put that puller in there, I like to take this washer out. That way we can get completely seated with our puller. If we're not completely seated, it could pretty easily damage all those threads. So the puller looks like this. And we've got two different sizes here. This is the 27 uh, millimeter, obviously. Um, and it's a left-hand thread. So it actually spins on the opposite way that you would generally spin a bolt on. You want to turn it left. Uh, turn it left. Um, they call it left-hand threads. And go counterclockwise with those threads when you spin it. Now grab, put a socket on there, make sure you're completely seated and screw that in. Now a lot of times it won't come the first time like that. So a lot of times what I'll do is take my socket off, put it on there, take a hammer, tap on it. And, um, and a lot of times it'll just bounce right off of there. It's magnetic. So you're going to have a little bit of pushback um, or pull on it actually when you're, when you're pulling on it. So then we're able to just remove that flywheel puller there. And there's your flywheel. You got magnets all the way around there. Two Phillips to remove the stator here. And I'll use my impact driver to do that. It looks like it's in really good condition. We'll test it and make sure it's in as good a condition as it looks. So we had to remove this, uh, well, remove the sensor, but there's a little Phillips on top of that sensor that you've got to remove that the wires come in from. Go ahead and pull that stator up then after I remove those two Phillips tapered screws, and there's your stator assembly. Sensor's ready to come out. And then you do have to remove, and I don't like to use my impact on this one. Although we may have to, sometimes we throw a little bit of a challenge. When we're splitting the case, you got to remove this one, otherwise this um, little arm here will hold us up. And it won't, we, it'll, it'll bend out of the way just fine, but then you've got a bent piece there. So we've got Phillips all the way around here. We'll go ahead and remove those. I like to take a screwdriver, clean them out really good. And then you can take your impact driver and put it in there. You want to make sure this is seated really well before you slam on it. Like I've said in past videos, this impact driver on an older bike is just about required. About four more, I think.
now we can go ahead and pull all those out. counted 12. Oops, and we've got one more here. I guess I did loosen that. That's 13. We'll see if that does it. And we'll have to flip this over. Now we've got clutches to pull, but since this motor was flipped up this way, I thought I would do this. We've got to remove that sprocket bolt as well. Looks like a 12 millimeter. Whatever my 12 is. Now I like to hold these, but they, you got to be really careful doing that with a socket or with a sprocket because it is, it's got a keeper on it as well. You got to bang that flat. The sprocket will spin, so you got to be really, really careful hanging on to it. I guess it's the 13, which I'm not sure that that's stock, but that's what it is. So sprocket's off now. We'll flip this motor back over. We'll start pulling the clutches. Now, I told you I was going to get that drain plug out. It's a lot easier to do it now as opposed to later. I'll show you how I'm going to do that. rounded off that Phillips is so it's going to be extremely difficult to get out with a Phillips. So what I do is take a chisel and I'll make a groove on there and then kind of turn it the direction it needs to go as I'm, as I'm hitting it and that'll a lot of times loosen it up. When you've got good room like this one to to get a chisel in there, this that trick works really well. Obviously, this screw is gonna be junk, but at least it's out. And that was, like I said, the drain for the carburetor, and also the holder for the clutch cable runs through there. So we've got clutch cover to pull now. We'll see how this motor is gonna sit. I guess it'll be upside down, so you'll have to. We'll have to figure out how to watch that. <laughs> Not to sit upside down in your chair. All right, more Phillips. It's kind of the common theme on this thing. That's all right. We got our driver here. A lot of these are already loosened up, I guess. These internal ones I didn't loosen up. We got a rotary on this one, so that. Something different on the older machines, they have those, these rotaries, which... Okay, those are out. And this is just going to be a cover here. This isn't going to be, we're not going to be getting into the crank case yet, but our clutches will be under here. I don't think we need to remove these two to remove this cover. Kickstarter shaft is coming out here. I'll tip this back so you can see what I'm doing. Rubber hammer or plastic. Tap on this. Be really careful we don't If, if an area is not coming, you want to just check it to see if um, see if there's any screws left. Sometimes it's just held up slightly. You never want to use a screwdriver and really force on it, but a lot of times it's it's a lot smaller than your finger. If you're really careful, you can get in there and just just barely use it to pull that out. 
So we've got clutch cover off here. That's what it looks like from the inside. This piece here would have come out, but we didn't need to. It just spins. So this is what the clutch was holding on to, and it just kind of spins there freely. So we've got our clutch underneath here, Kickstarter gear, oil pump gear here, and your rotary is underneath here, and we'll get down to that here in a bit. This piece here that popped off there sits on the clutch. Now this uh, piece is what this clutch cable hits, so it pushes back on this um, when it needs to um, disengage that clutch. So, eight millimeter bolts all the way around there. But to pull this whole pack off, we're just going to go ahead and remove this snap ring. A lot of times there's a nut under here and you can't do it this way. But able just to pull that snap ring off, now we're able just to pull that whole clutch, clutch pack off as one assembly. Now you can pull that clutch uh, friction plates and steel plates out and inspect it there. Look for grooving right here is pretty common. A lot of times these break if it's been abused, but this one looks like it's in great condition. We'll measure those and make sure it's within spec there. And there's a spring that sits in behind there. Now this shifter runs from the other side and you see this was holding it up. So as soon as we undid it from that shift drum there, we're able to just pull that shifter out and now the shifter's out. The Kickstarter on this model, I believe you kind of got to disassemble it if I remember right. So pull this center piece out. This kind of holds that spring in place. And the shaft um, won't come out until you split that case. So this spring here is obviously spring loaded, so kind of be careful removing it, but we just pulled it out of there. Now we're now it's able to come out the other way when we get that case split. So doing it upside down again, sorry about that, but we're gonna um, remove these Phillips around this rotary here and then get to pull that gear there as well. You want to be careful uh, from the other side what you're slamming on if you've got to use too much force on your impact driver you don't want to damage threads or levers or anything on the other side. Sometimes I'll take a piece of cardboard and front, put it down there just as, a, as kind of a, a cushion but um, in this case, we're disassembling this whole thing, and those pieces over there aren't going to be affected. This is your rotary cover here, and we've got a 19 millimeter. And I'm going to take it, I'm going to hold on to the crank. If I don't, it'll spin that crank. that off there. Sl just slide that gear off. Got a woodruff key here that we'll need to remove since we're splitting that case. And that woodruff keys are nice because you don't have to line anything up. That woodruff key is where that gear needs to go. If it doesn't have a woodruff key, you want to be careful you put the gear in the right spot. There'll be an indicator dot generally as to where you put that. So rotary cover is there, the rotary plate is here, be really careful you don't score that up. Sometimes on these older machines, sometimes if they get water and stuff in here, they'll rust up really bad. We don't actually have to pull this now, it'll come off when we split that case. So we'll just wait so we don't damage that plate in doing that. So we're going to pull a bunch of these Phillips screws. shift drum here. I want to be really careful because this shift drum turns and if you slam it uh, extremely hard it could break a fork on the other side. All right looks like that is what we need to take out. There's a 10 millimeter here that we need to take out. It's spring loaded. Kind of holds that shift drum into place there. Okay, 
Okay, now all this shift drum will come out together. We might just leave it like that. There's pins in here. If we pull this plate off, if you guys can see that there, if we pull this plate off this shift drum here, there's um, little pins that fall out, which, which is just difficult to keep all together. So, all right, we have got what I think is everything apart that needs to come out to split that case. Now I'm gonna take a rubber hammer again, or a plastic again. Tap, I like tapping on this sprocket shaft there. That's a main shaft that goes all the way through and that is a uh, pretty strong one to tap on. You don't want to obviously use a steel hammer in doing any of this. Okay, as we get it split a little bit farther and farther, to make sure nothing's holding us up. Sometimes we can start forcing it and a bolt could still be stuck in there. And again, a little crowbar or screwdriver can act as fingers, but you want to be careful not to um, put too much pressure at all. There's, there'll be a gasket or sealant that'll seal it if you, uh, if you do this, but you don't ever want to put enough force in it to score anything. Just just the same amount of pressure you'd use with your hand. And I think everything is out. Now we're just You can see I'm not gritting my teeth or anything when I'm pulling these apart. Okay, we're stuck on this crank here is where it's stuck at. So if this plate was off of here, if we were to push this, I think there'd be a gap. So we're gonna just work on getting this plate off of there. Oh, you know what? Very, very crucial. I'm glad we did that. So there's a pin underneath here that holds this plate in place. So had we kept on going there, we would have damaged we could, it, well, that crank wouldn't have come out any farther. So there's a tiny little pin, and let's see if my pliers can grab it here. This pin will come out. There we go. That is what was holding us up. So I'm glad we pulled that rotary off there. Still not wanting to come, but it is extremely loose. Set it up here and we'll use this. Before we take it completely apart, I like to kind of set it up on the end so any gears that are in place will stay with each other. That just kind of helps me when we're going back together, remember where everything's at. So that goes on there with the washer uh, O-ring. All right, current case is split. This gear will actually come out. So that is splitting the crankcase. 
This uh, Kickstarter gear here is spring loaded. And you saw it come apart there. But spring, spring goes in. And this cap goes over top then. And then there's a peg right here that will fit down in there. And there we go. That's oops, that's not in all the way. That's slide it in the end. And there's your Kickstarter there. You've got your transmission here. Well see, I like to be able to get it all out at one time. Sometimes it's not possible, but we're able to get it out just in one handful there. Alright, and then we'll take and we'll take this crank out. A lot of times all I'll do is take that nut that was holding that uh, stator on, put it back on there, and then use our rubber mallet there to tap, continue tapping on. That way we don't damage the threads. Even with a uh, plastic hammer or rubber hammer, you can still damage those threads. So we'll go ahead and remove that crank and... Uh, Thanks for watching.